Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here, and today we've got some, well, some interesting information that's come out of the World of Warships Development Blog Facebook page. And some of it's good, some of it's not so good, depending upon your opinion, and some of it's just a little bit strange, honestly. So let's go ahead and dive on in. I'm going to be reading straight from the post. Again, if you want to get this information like the second it comes out, go and follow the World of, War World of Warships Development Blog Facebook page over on, well, Facebook, obviously. Um, again, I'm going to read straight from it, word for word. So here we go. PT balance changes. It's a public test server. Please know that all information in the development blog is preliminary and subject to change during testing. Any showcased features may or may not end up on the main server. The final information will be published on our game's website. We've changed the characteristics of several ships, having analyzed their combat performance and taken player feedback into account. Such changes were required to carefully adjust the balance of selected warships, and will continue to introduce changes in the updates that will follow if deemed necessary. So here we go. Um, Valkyrie Tier 3 British Destroyer. Main battery reload time increased from 5.5 to 5.8 seconds. Weymouth Tier 2 British Cruiser. Main battery reload time increased from 8.9 to 9.2 seconds. Tier 5 Hawkings British Cruiser. Main battery reload time reduced from 13 to 12.6 seconds. New York Tier 5 American Battleship. Main battery reload time reduced from 31 to 30.5 seconds. Tier 8, Ognavoy, Tier, uh, yeah, Ognavoy Tier 8, Brit uh, Soviet Destroyer. Defensive AA fire consumable moved to 5th slot. Torpedo speed increased from 56 to 57 knots. Number of engine boosts and smoke generator consumable reduced from 3 to 2. Uteloy Tier 9, Soviet Destroyer. Stock torpedo module 53-49 was changed to module 53-49M. Torpedo parameters were changed the following way. Torpedo range increased from 6 to 8 kilometers. Torpedo speed reduced from 69 to 66 knots. Researchable torpedo module 53-49M was changed to module 53-49 mod 4. Torpedo parameters were changed in the following way. Torpedo range increased from 8 to 10 kilometers. Torpedo speed reduced from 66 to 60 knots. Maximum torpedo damage increased from 14,600 to 15,100. Torpedo tubes or load time increased from 129 seconds to 135 seconds. Defensive AA fire consumable moved to 5th slot. Number of engine boost and smoke generator consumables reduced from 3 to 2. Tier 10 Soviet destroyer Grozovoy. Defensive AA fire and engine boost consumables were swapped. Maximum researchable torpedo damage increased from 14,600 to 15,100. Pyotr Bagration, Tier 8 Soviet Premium Cruiser. Hydroacoustic search consumables parameters were changed. The range of assured acquisition of ships increased from 4 to 5 kilometers. The range of assured acquisition of torpedoes increased from 3 to 3.5 kilometers. Hmm. Hakuru, Tier 10 Japanese Carrier. Maximum AP bomb damage of stock and researchable bomb was reduced from 8,500 to 8,200. T-22, Tier 5 German Destroyer. Hydroacoustic search consumables. Action time was increased from 60 to 70 seconds. Henri IV, Tier 10 French Cruiser. Time for the ship's engine to reach maximum power was, lightly re was slightly reduced. It will make the ship's acceleration to maximum speed a bit faster. Kremlin, Tier 10 the Soviet battleship, strong ship. Continuous AA damage reduced from 413 to 395. Number of shell explosions in a salvo reduced from 9 to 8. I'm not making that up. They really nerfed the AA again. Aircraft spotting range of all planes reduced from 16 to 15 kilometers. This characteristic determines at what distance the aircraft is capable of spotting an enemy. Please note that all information in the dev blog is preliminary, preliminary and subject to change during testing. Any showcase features may or may not end up on the main server. The final information will be published on our game's website. So, 
Before we go on the Krillin, let's cover the other two major things. Um, so the the Grozovoy and the um, Udaloy and the Gnevni, Um I'm not a destroyer main, and I don't play those destroyers, so it sounds like they're not really getting nerfed, but kind of reworked. They're moving some consumables around, changing some torpedoes, so that's an interesting change there for a line that's, in my, my, my recent memory at least, it's been largely untouched for a very long time, so there's that. Um, Bagration's Hydroacoustic Search being buffed. Uh, I never used the Hydro on Bagration because, like, every single game I've played in that ship has been a CV game. I mean, I think I may have had three games that weren't CV games out of the, like, 15 or so that I've played to review her. So, that's interesting. They're not the biggest buffs ever, either. And the ship was already considered by most of the community to be alright, so... I don't think this is going to upset the balance in any way there. So the first big thing, Hakuru, her maximum AP bomb damage has been reduced. So those of you that haven't played Clan Wars, um, Hawk's been kind of toxic. <laughs> um, and if I ever post a Clan Wars video, which I don't think I will because, you know, Clan Wars games are kind of boring to watch, especially if you aren't, you know, someone who is in the video or if you're not just invested in Clan Wars, they're, it's pretty boring to watch. Um... But Hawk, it's just, whew, with her AP bombs, if you get all of them in a drop to Citadel a ship, you can 25-5 them, which means you do 25,500 damage to them in one drop. Um, but yeah, if I ever upload a, a Clan Wars video, you, you'll, you'll hear one of us say, Val, 25-5, insert ship here. Val's our carrier player. And that means we want him to get the glorious 25,500 triple citadel strike on the uh, the enemy ship. And yes, 25,500 at tier 10. That's still a, a big chunk of your health. That if, uh, if you're unfortunate enough to be playing Des Moines or Salem, that's almost all of your health gone in one strike. So it's nice to see that they're toning that down. And again, Wargaming's gone from... Do, well, at least the Water Warships devs. They've gone from doing these big sledgehammer changes where they like completely just nerf or buff the crap out of something to kind of these these minute changes changes where they're trying to like dial something in. So Hawk losing 300 damage um, from one AP bomb, that's a good start for them to start um, toning that down because it is a little ridiculous in my opinion to lose like 90% of your ship's health to a carrier drop, which... You know, there's so many variables that you don't control going into that, so that that's good that they're um, that they're starting to tone that down. Henri the Fourth, Henry's getting a bit of a buff now. What is concerning is that they do not say how much quicker the ship is going to be. And those of you that don't remember, Henry got a big old sledgehammer to its knees back. Uh, I think it was like two patches ago, where they just nerfed the crap out of her engine acceleration. So, instead of being able to play Henry like so many French cruiser players have been playing Henry for years now, and keep that in mind too, Henry's been out for three years, almost four years now, and they just hit it in the face with a sledgehammer. Um, and you can often find Henry players throttle juking using the Henry's range and awesome acceleration and engine boost to their advantage, which it's a, was, well, it's pretty enjoyable to play when I did play a lot of Henry. Um, but yeah, now Henry has the acceleration of actually slower acceleration than some tier 10 battleships, even with its engine boost sometimes. So, um, yeah, that, that's good that they're fixing that. Okay, Kremlin. At this point, the devs have to know they're trolling us. Like, why? <laughs> Continuous AA damage reduced from 413 to 395. Number of shells in a salvo, uh, shell explosions in a salvo, reduced from nine to eight. What? Why? It is. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say, guys. Like they have to know it's a huge joke now, because everything else about the Kremlin that they could tweak, the turret rotation, the armor, the um, the hit points. They're not touching any of that. They've only touched the sigma, and the. AA. Now the Sigma, yeah, that was a good change. Um, in my last Kremlin video where we, we, we talked about Kremlin and, oh, has it been nerfed too much or has it not been nerfed enough? Uh, I said that, you know, when they first reduced the Sigma, 
they made it to where Kremlin couldn't consistently just slam targets at 20 kilometers, which it shouldn't be able to do. That's not the way the Kremlin was designed or presented to us by Wargaming. It was presented to us as a ship that was going to be not that great at range, actually garbage at range, but from about 15 kilometers inward, it was going to be pretty decent, and the closer you got to the target, the better your dispersion was going to get. And like I said, when Kremlin first came out, it could absolutely just slam targets at 20 kilometers consistently with 457 millimeter shells, with Soviet ballistics, and all the good and fun stuff that comes with Soviet sh uh, Soviet shells. And the first nerf, when they reduced its signal by 0.1 the first time, it was noticeable at maximum range because you couldn't consistently hit ships anymore at that range and dunk on them. But from about 17 kilometers, you were still pretty good at that. Now, it wasn't that big of a change. But then they hit it with the second uh, 0.1 Sigma nerf. And that one felt like they like slapped the crap out of the Sigma. Because now, as you see in, this, in the gameplay that's been going on in the background, shots at range are absolutely just you shoot and you pray you hit something. And it feels kind of like a, a slot machine now. You pull the lever, sometimes you get great dispersion at um, 15 kilometers back and sometimes you still get pretty decent dispersion, but you're not able to just consistently dunk on ships like you used to when Kremlin first came out. And uh, in the last Kremlin video, I said that, you know, maybe, you know, they've hit it pretty hard with the nerf bat with the dispersion. I think they did some stealth nerfs behind the curtain that they didn't tell us about because there's so much more going on to the game than what the game actually tells you. For example, Sigma. Everyone hears about Sigma, but you won't find it anywhere in the game you have to go like in in the ui in the menu system and then in the ship stats that is nowhere to be found you got to go to um some websites to find some external websites not by wargaming that you have to find the actual sigma value sometimes so you know that's just one example of that and i think they did some tweaking there because kremlin now even at like 10 kilometers sometimes you get dispersion that like puts roma to shame and, you know, that really shouldn't be happening. Because the whole point of Kremlin is that you get closer in order to decrease your dispersion and get better hits in. And by getting closer in a battleship, you know, especially in something like Kremlin that's huge, one of the least maneuverable tier 10 ships, tied for the slowest tier 10 ship with uh, Ohio. And yet it does have good torpedo protection, but as you see here, it can still be taken out if it eats its fair share of torpedoes, which, again, it's a massive ship, so it's not the hardest thing to torpedo. And believe it or not, guys, it's actually pretty easy to Citadel. Its Citadel is above the waterline. Montana Citadel isn't above the waterline, and people talk about how garbage that thing Citadel is all the time. Kremlin's is above the waterline. The thing with the Kremlin is that, you know, if, if you're playing it right, playing it bow and slightly angled, you'll invite ships to shoot at your angled broadside, and they'll bounce off. Just like the Mosfa and the Stalingrad, too. You play those ships angled, shells will bounce, um, and that's the way they're meant to be played. But again, if you can get the side of a if you can get the side of a Kremlin, it's it's fairly dead, depending on if you're in a battleship or a cruiser um, or a destroyer with torpedoes. And the other thing about the Kremlin that I said actually needs to be kind of nerfed a little bit is the turret tur rotation, because with the turret rotation being about 30 seconds it kind of negates the whole drawback of being a very long, very slow battleship because your turrets can just slap onto the other side in like 30 seconds. So if a cruiser does manage to flank you and your turrets are on one side of the ship, you can get them off to the other side in 30 seconds, and that's really not that long. Um, granted, they could have pumped a couple of rounds of torpedoes into you depending upon what cruiser they are, but, you know, still, I would want that nerf just a little bit. Now, people bring up the Ohio, and but the Ohio only has eight guns, two guns per turret, and Ohio is nowhere near as accurate as Kremlin is from 10 kilometers. Ohio doesn't get any type of special dispersion or anything the closer you get into it, and I've shot at broadside ships from about 11, 11, 10 kilometers away in Ohio, and yeah, half the shells still go in the water, but you have decent secondaries, and that's the trade-off for that, so... That's my spiel about Ohio versus Kremlin, so there's that. But, yeah, I I don't know what it is with Wargaming's obsession with only touching 
the AA, and the Sigma on Kremlin. There's other things you can tweak about it wargaming that would balance it and make people happy, uh, you know. And the whole Russian bias thing, is Kremlin really that Russian bias? Uh, with Kuznetsov, kind of, as you're seeing in, in this video. Because I got First Blood, got uh, Hidden Reserves or Extra Reserves, whatever the shit it's called. And I got six damage cons and five heals right there. And then with Kudazov's Will to Victory, where well, um, where you just choose to not die, you get another heal and another damage con. So I had six heals and seven damage cons available to me in this match. That's a lot for this ship to have. Now, without Kuznetsov, Kremlin, I think it's actually pretty okay. It's on the strong side, but it's not like crazy OP like some people like to scream. With Kuznetsov, I would say it is, yeah. And yeah, I did use Kuznetsov because it's a huge advantage. And most Kremlin captains run Kuznetsov. Most players, I mean, if you have Kuznetsov, the same freaking build works for Kremlin, works for Moskva, works for Stalingrad, works for Sinop and Ranked. So, yeah, it's a good investment if you're a, a Soviet captain. And in my opinion, that's the thing that pushes all those ships over the edge to Russian bias. So maybe we don't need to nerf um, Stalingrad or Kremlin or Sinop. Maybe you need to nerf Kuznetsov a little bit. But that's a hard thing to do because he's a, a special commander that you had to um, acquire through the... Uh, how'd you get him? The, the campaign or the coal or whatever. It would be difficult to nerf him and not just make all those people who invested their time and resources into getting him mad because you know that would make me mad if i enjoyed my kusazov on my stalingrad for example and then you go and nerf him after i did what i had to do in order to acquire him so that's my spiel about that and about the kremlin so overall this patch list or patch update whatever you want to call this i think there's a lot of good there the Henri getting buffed the hakuru being toned down um one thing that I was kind of upset not to see is some type of change to Venezia, because oh my god, that thing in Clan Wars is toxic as well. Um, we fought whole teams of Venezias in Clan Wars, and it is toxic, it is a pain, and mamma mia, Venezia, if Venezia escapes his Clan Wars without being uh, nerfed in some way, confirmed pasta bias. I mean, nothing else to say about that. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, let me know what you think about this in the comments down below about the, again, nerf to Kremlin's AA. Which, I mean, I've gotten, you know, DAA'd in Kremlin quite a bit. More so than any other battleship um, in recent memory. A couple of games before this one, I just lost all my AA and all my secondaries in, like, five minutes, if that. Actually, it was, no, it was, like, three minutes because it was, it was a, a um, Thunder that was that was uh, just HE spamming me. All my AA. All my sector is gone. And yes, I was in a carrier game. Lexington had his way with me. Nothing I could do about it, but I guess that's what Wargaming wants rather than just flanking the thing in another battleship or a torpedo boat. But anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, let me know what you think about all this in the comments down below. Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. If you did enjoy the video, please drop a like and subscribe. We're on our way to 15,000 subscribers, and I cannot wait for us to get there. Uh, again, enjoy your Saturday. Stay safe and healthy during these times. And I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Oh,